Hi there, everybody, and welcome to another video. On today's video, I have the VW Touran here. This is a 2008, and uh, I'm gonna be changing the front brake discs and pads and the rear brake discs and pads. So I have all the bits here, uh, rear discs, <clears throat> front discs. I'm using, well, this is what I got delivered, this make brake fit. Um, for the pads as well so hopefully it will fit all uh, properly um, I don't normally use this make so much but that's what I got so um, I also have to change the battery but that's not a difficult uh, one on this car um, so I'm gonna concentrate on the front discs and pads here and the first thing I'm actually going to do is open the the bonnet or the hood as it's called as well um, just have to pull on that there which will release the bonnet and, and then there's a little thing here we need to press just that there to get this bonnet open and then um, I'm going to open the just open the brake fluid reservoir that is sitting back here and I'm doing that because um, we need to push the pistons back in the calipers in order to put new uh, pads and um, when we push the pistons back the fluid comes back out up here so if this is close uh, pressure is built and it's really hard to push the pistons back and also we can damage this here so just open that and um, also if that reservoir is fairly full then um, when you push the pistons back you may actually have some fluid coming out of here so I'm just gonna check how much you can see the the yellow sort of color in there that's the fluid in this container and I can see that this one is there is a max mark a little bit difficult to see there but but there is the max mark is just on the side there so this is I think is sitting a little bit below the max However, it looks like if I push the front and rear uh, pads, this may actually, the fluid may flow out. So just in case, um, it's a good idea to put some paper around there to absorb, if there's any fluid coming out, to absorb it, because we, you just don't want it to go all, all, all over the, um, the chassis and the bodywork there, because uh, it can be a little bit corrosive. So or if if it does leak then make sure you rinse it afterwards you can wash the area with water or uh, brake cleaner but obviously you need to get it all out so you could try to absorb some maybe put some paper some rag uh, and if nothing comes out then great <laughs> sometimes uh, the fluid is a little bit lower as the pads wear down obviously the fluid goes down but sometimes uh, people top it up and when you top it up, then when you push those pistons back, it will come out. So at the moment, I'm in the unknown whether it was topped up or not. So we'll just be cautious and put paper. But the main thing is also to open that cover there. And I'm going to leave that just sitting there because there is a bit of dust from this thing as well. And we don't want the dust going into the uh, container and contaminating the fluid. Um, so... Now I have to get the car up, wheels off, and uh, we'll start changing. I think I'll do the front first and then the rear. To remove the wheels, you're gonna need your locking wheel nut, which should be located in your luggage compartment here. <clears throat> so I just got it out of that pouch there. Um, open this 
cover back here, you will find that set of tools in there, hopefully. <laughs> and in this little pocket here, you're looking will not should be hiding. So I'm just gonna leave that there. And that will fit onto that. There will be a little cover like this one covering that wheel nut, but it's missing. And these are 17 mil bolts, by the way. So in your toolkit, you also have a little thing like, like a hook to pull this out, actually. So I'm just using a different one. So get them out like that. And then remove the the wheel nuts and remove the wheel and be careful because these are heavy as well so don't hurt yourself okay so i'm just preparing my front discs and pads before i start changing anything um when you take the disc out of the box you may find this uh, a little bit oily i think they add some oil so prevent some corrosion so just clean it with a bit of that brake cleaner uh, you want to clean both sides so just wiping the oil a little bit and uh, another thing to note is uh, the, the pads the pads on one side so in this case passenger side here in the uk um, they have a sensor so although i'm going to concentrate on the driver's side um just wanted to show you uh, the only difference so the only difference between each side is the is the sensor so when you get your caliper out you have the sensor there and uh, for that all we have to do is flick that little clip there back and pull this sensor out. Let's try to do that. If I can do it now. So it's just that little clip. You don't want to break it. The clip is actually connected there. So <laughs> just went through there. Sometimes it's easier to go through there than it is to there and you will you will hear a little click And then you can pull it out Ultimately um, If you're using your two hands, obviously you can push this back Open that little clip there If you can see that And pull this out. However, when this is plugged in sometimes you pull on this bit and that doesn't move because it's just a stack on the on that bit there. So you could go like I did from this end and open it. And once you've got that done, you'll be able to remove the caliper and pull your pad out. So, just gonna leave that there for now. Don't wanna put stress on that cable. So, I'll, I'll move on to the other side now. Um, but I'll just show you that that's the only difference here. First, we need to remove these little um, covers that are on the side here. There is uh, obviously two of those because there is two bolts holding this caliper in place. And those bolts are in there. They are um, size seven Allen. So I just, I turned the wheel towards myself to make it easier for me to have a better view here. OK, 
okay so we can just loosen those bolts a little bit they're not gonna be tight in there but before I fully remove this Um, you want to just want to make sure you can remove this little screw here now sometimes that, that screw can get really tight um, so I'm just using a t30 torx here to take that make sure that little screw is loose um, sometimes that can get really stuck in there really tight so even these can when you try to open them they can round the head of that little bolt in which case after um, people suggest putting a lot of lubricant and also or even before trying to open it you could apply lubrication and whatnot if you are struggling a little bit before you round the head <laughs> Um, in the past I had to drill the little head or um, again people suggesting to heat this up if you have the facilities but sometimes you, you don't have the facilities so you could also chisel this on the side and whatnot to get it loose in this case luckily it's loose because it, this has always been greased during uh, service um, and normally this gets tightened, you should only tighten this, tight this little bolt here by hand. Um, or it's like 8 Newton meters or something like that. And also, before we remove the caliper, just want to remove this little this spring here. So, just going to take that bit out there. And just be careful it doesn't go out flying on your face. Right. So take it out. And the other thing before we completely remove caliper here. which I normally do is I put a screwdriver here and just push the piston back. That screwdriver may be a little bit too big. So what I do is I put the screwdriver there and push the piston back. You may be able to see how it's going back. So let's come back and now we can concentrate on taking the caliper out. Also you may want to use one of these to hang your caliper up in the suspension because um, you don't want to leave it hanging here and put a strain or stress on this uh, brake pipe. It can be a bit of a pain sometimes pulling this out because the little clips in there get stuck. Or, I mean, those kind of retaining springs. But you want to be careful as well because you don't want to damage this, this rubber around 
the piston. Alright, so I'm just trying to Right, so just hanging it there, trying to keep the hose without stress. And uh, even though it's not sitting the way I would like to in a minute, I think I'm gonna fix that. And now we wanna remove this here. So that's the other part. So you may be wondering, I mean, my pads look like new but uh, the reason I'm changing them is because I'm changing the disc. The disc is corroded and it's got quite a bit of corrosion all around. And that's why I'm actually changing these discs. Okay, so I'm going to uh, remove the caliper carrier here with a this is a 21 mil bolt so this can be a little bit tight i'm using a power bar because they usually get tightened to like 130 or newton meters or so something like that We'll check those settings in a bit. Now I'm just going to remove the little screw from the side. Which was already loose. That little screw is it's more like a little guide pin to hold your disc in place. But it's not really it's not really holding the disc. Most a lot of cars don't actually have that little screw. You can inspect a little bit this area. This one is actually not bad. Sometimes you get corrosion there, so you could apply a little bit of copper grease. Just putting some on the threads as well there. And the thread of the little screw. And we have our disc ready to go on there. Okay, disc is in place. So now we want to um, clean or we can basically wire brush. While this is out, we can give it a nice wire brushing, like so. Especially the areas where the uh, the pads sitting on. So I'll do that now. I'll give a good clean to this, and I will also. These are the the bolts or the guide pins that gone inside of the caliper uh, I'm gonna clean them as well you can see all that black stuff I will clean them and wire brush them a little bit because that's one way of getting that hard stuff out so just gently wire brush them and also I am going to 
this is the caliper I'll just give it a little wire brush around but be careful with this this part here is rubber where the piston is and that rubber can get damaged or pierced with this uh, wire brush so if you wire brush this just do it carefully don't need to go mad about it just do a little bit because it's gonna get dusty anyway you just want to get rid of any corrosion or anything like that that may have formed around and um, so that's what i'm going to do and then come back to refitting everything okay so i'm ready to fit my caliper carrier here um, and also i already i put a little bit of copper grease on these areas here where the pads slide just a little bit nothing too crazy so now we can put this bolts back on don't think that one is going in yet So it says tighten, I'm going to use a torque wrench here, tighten these to actually 80 Newton meters. So we're going to do that. One of our pads will go there. the pad we have to push so I might try to do it so while my caliper is hanging here I may actually try to push this in, in there <laughs> right Now, I clean this nicely and I applied a little bit of uh, grease. That grease is called uh, molly grease. So again, I have a torque wrench here set to 35 Newton meters. Thirty-five Newton meters isn't a lot of force. Now we put the little covers, dust covers. And we're almost done here, but we have to put this spring back in there. So I normally push that in and with a screwdriver, I sort of, while pushing this in with my finger, I get my screwdriver and push this out.
it can be a bit of a, a bit of a fizzle sometimes. is in it does take a little bit of force to push that in while bringing this out <laughs> but it's not terrible it's definitely doable right so that's pretty much it really um, so the other side had um, the only difference was this so all you have to do is plug that in there and that's it so this side is finished as well um, and we're pretty much done with the front so i'm going to move to the back now right to do the rear discs and pads um you would need you need this uh, this special tool for pushing the piston back and also you need um, a socket that is gonna fit the bolts that hold the caliper carrier so I didn't have the correct tool to do that and uh, I just went ahead and had to figure out how to remove the bolts from the back so I'm just gonna give you a few tips here I'm afraid I uh, I couldn't film because I didn't have the right tools and then, and then I was um, trying to find ways of removing the bolts <coughs> let me show you what I need. These bolts here are sitting at the back here like so. There's one and two there and they hold this the carrier in place so that will be sitting there. Um, and basically, this is a tool that you need. This is, uh, it's got a lot of uh, splines there. It's a, sp a special kind of VW tool used. Uh, many VWs use uh, this kind of bolts on the doors and whatnot. And this is a size 14. However, this is a little bit too long and I struggle to fit it in here because when you put it in there it touches this frame here and then you can't actually get the tool in there um, the bottom one you can just about manage if you get an extension you can actually um, so that's the hole there you fit it there and it comes out of here with the extension you can loosen that bolt but it's the, the top one is the problem um, so I'm gonna show you on this side, which I already finished. So we have <clears throat> that one and that one. So in order to loosen the, the top one, I had to put a 14 mil um, wrench in here. So basically uh, what I did is got a, a 14 mil spanner in there um, and through here so I got that in there and the 14 mil in there coming out this way and I put that inside of the 14 mil and open the bolt with that hopefully you can imagine that and then the bolt came out. The only problem with doing that that way is that 
<laughs> no, I can't pick it up. Well, I'll do that in a minute. Um, when we when I refit these bolts back, I won't be able to torque them. Only this, I'll be able to torque that, but I won't be able to torque that. This is a 90 newton meters torque. But as we saw in the front, 80 newton meters. It's not exactly a lot of force. So you can still tighten that. Um, to that kind of force um, easily um, only it's gonna be on an awkward way um, um, to get the caliper out not difficult to get this caliper out you just have 13 mil volt in there and a 13 mil volt at the bottom take those out uh, when you are undoing the 13 mil here you need to obviously it's coming out of here um, you need to hold this here because it's going to be it's going to move so I normally hold it with a pair of pliers hold it there and then undo the bolts also they are a little bit of an awkward angle when you have your ratchet in there basically when you have your ratchet in there you have all this frame here which is a bit of a pain top one is okay but the bottom one can cause some issues but it comes out not an issue if you can use a spanner instead of a of a ratchet so because the ratchet is a bit long so it touches the metal there but um, if you use a spanner then you can do it and it's a little bit hard to remove them it takes a little while because they have some of that uh, Loctite stuff on them but they do come out and then you can wiggle this out I usually put a screwdriver at the top and one at the bottom and push this out because it's a little bit hard to pull it out and um, the pads will then just come out and you need to push the piston back so to push the piston back you use that tool I showed you earlier one that you have to wind this while you wind this in you um, unwind the other end and it kind of pushes the piston in uh, the disc like the front remove the torque screw from there and take the disc out now I'm ready to fit my new disc with it yeah <coughs> with the screw as you may be able to see I put a little bit of copper grease in there Try to keep corrosion away. So then we just have to get our disc in there. So obviously be careful the disc doesn't fall on your foot. <laughs> right. Same size as the front, 30 torques hand tight or 10 newton meters eight or eight I think um, and now I'm going to refit my caliper carrier but I think you can now understand this is the same sort of procedure as the front it's nothing really different um, you have these uh, new uh, sitting metal parts here that I removed the old ones and I fit the new ones that came with my pads. These nice and shiny parts here. That's where the the pads slide on that. Um, sometimes you don't get those so you can clean the old ones but uh, but hopefully your kit will come with some of those. Um, so, fit that back on, get the bolts at the back back on, tighten, like I said, 90 newton meters. Obviously, if you can get a smaller one of these, not too long, then um, that will uh, help you. It'll be a lot easier because then you can uh, get a, a power bar in there or even your torque wrench to torque this properly. 
because if that was a bit shorter I would be able to fit this in there this flexible head which would then go down and I would be able to put an extension all the way to the back and torque that up but as it stands it doesn't fit because it's, it's too long right anyway with all of that said I'm gonna go ahead and refit everything and then the last thing to do will be to make sure we press pump the brake check the fluid and uh, close our reservoir right as I'm fitting this back um, got my pants in there put that caliper carrier in and um, I just wanted to show you the setup that I meant so that's where the tool is that's the 14 mil spanner and with that I can tighten this bolt so I'm gonna go ahead and do that I've already tightened the bottom one and uh, torqued it to 90 newton meters um, we can then once we tighten that you can then refit your caliper and <clears throat> You're gonna have you're gonna have two new bolts that have lock Loctite on them. If you haven't got the new bolts and your kit, again, sometimes they don't come with new bolts. Um, you will have to. You can apply some. You can actually buy some Loctite and uh, put it on your old bolts. So um, you can do that now. These are two bolts going there and uh, we're gonna torque this to 35 newton meters as well. Sometimes this doesn't line up. Right, so this is what I mean when you're undoing or tightening this, this bit starts turning. So I usually use um, one of these to hold it while either I tighten it or I <clears throat> release it and like I said 35 newton meters for these bolts so I'm gonna get them in in a minute and I'm gonna tighten that now so I don't forget okay so once you finish doing all your brakes and pads discs and whatnot uh, the first thing to do is to press the brake and you will feel how it goes all the way in and then just pump it a few times until it's nice and hard and now the last thing to do will be just to check if anything has happened here So I wrapped some paper around here, now I can see the paper is wet so it's possible that a bit of fluid did come out of here. I'm going to just uh, remove my paper. Try not to, just gonna close this cover momentarily here because this, this thing here is kind of falling apart a little bit. So creating a lot of dust. Um, right, so I can see a bit of fluid there. It must have come out a bit. Let's take that out. So, now what you really want to do is just check the quantities okay just put a bit of cardboard there to stop touching that, that uh, soundproof thing there because it's kind of creating a lot of dust um, so what you want to do really is check the quantities of uh, fluid that you have here if it's a little bit too much because um, obviously we pushed it back and i can see some came out so obviously i have a little bit too much 
there is like I said a max mark on the side you can shine a light on it and you can just about see how much fluid there is so if there is a little bit too much you may want a syringe you can use a syringe to take some fluid out you can take a couple of syringes out and uh, and that should be should be fine but um, at the moment if I just take that out I can see the fluid is right at the top there so I'm going to syringe a little bit out but um, but that's that's it really that's all we need to do um, once you syringe a little bit out put this cover back on and obviously screw it back on securely and uh, you're pretty much done so um, i would say because you have new brand new discs pads take it easy the first few 200 miles drive uh, normal and just make sure that everything is operating properly obviously um and then that's it really you should be done so so having said that i hope the video helps don't forget to subscribe and uh, we'll see you in the next video thank you for watching